This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to have a look at Solid Cache. And Solid Cache is a new gem that's released for Rails, and it is a caching mechanism that uses the database as the backend instead of an in memory. And so the idea behind this is that hard drives are getting much faster. And because of that, then it makes a bit more sense to use the hard drive to store the caches instead of memory because hard drive space is much cheaper than memory. However, you do want to use caution with this because if you do use a cloud service like AWS, or something similar, and you're using one of the managed databases, then you may be opting for a slower database by default. And the cost of faster disks could actually be more expensive than getting a Redis instance. However, if you are self-hosting, or if you are using a cloud service that does have much faster disks in VMEs or SSDs, then taking advantage of something like Solid Cache may be a bit more feasible. I have actually switched Drift and Ruby over to Solid Cache, even though my database storage is a little bit slower than memory. But the idea behind this is that I want to do a lot longer live storage of my caches. So a lot of items that do not change often, but are a bit more heavy to calculate, I'm able to store within the cache for several weeks without having to worry about them but your mileage may vary, so be sure that you're testing this out on your application to see if it makes sense. So in this episode, we're going to have a look at setting up Solid Cache and how we can use it within our Rails application. So here, I have two different things that are being cached, but right now, my caching is turned off. These are the same cache keys, and you can see that we are getting a different random number each time. However, if I run the bin rails dev colon cache, then we're going to be able to enable our caching. And the nice thing about this script is that it's going to automatically restart my Rails application so I don't have to worry about it. This is more simple than touching the temp file and then touching the temp restart as it does it all in one command. Now, if I go and refresh my application, you'll see that we have the same number and I have a cache of five seconds. So it'll be live for five seconds and then it'll change as it's expiring the old cache, and then it's having to recreate the cache. And we can actually see this happening on the right hand side, where we are getting these lines of solid cache entry load, where it's loading in the key and the value. I can refresh it again a few times, and it still pulls up the old cache until it expires, in which case it deletes it from the cache, and then inserts a new one. If we were to refresh again, because it's been over five seconds, then it's going to delete that cache again. And if we keep refreshing, then you see that it's using the cache from the database. And so the database query time is much more significant than what you would get with Redis. However, I think this falls under the good enough territory where our application is still responding quickly. And now we're not introducing additional infrastructure unless if you're already using Redis for Sidekick or with something like Action Cable. However, even if you are using Sidekick, you still have the question of what type of Redis server you're going to use. Is it going to be volatile or non-volatile? Because for caching, we really want a volatile service, whereas for something like Sidekick, you'd want to use non-volatile. And that's because the caching data shouldn't be relied on within the memory store because it could be recreated at any given point in time. However, something like Psychic, where you have a bunch of jobs queued up, if you were to lose those, then those jobs would never execute. So that's essentially why you would need two different ones. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.